What's up everyone, this is Tyson at Titans of CNC. As you saw, we have a pretty cool part we're machining, and right now we're finishing the blades that are on the front of the part. By using this toolpath, it was really easy to come up with the finish pass on the front of this part. So let's go over this. So the blade expert path is under our milling cycles in the multi-axis group, and it's at the bottom here, blade expert. I've already got my finish pass in the program, so we're just gonna go over that. You can see the preview on my part. I've got the ball tracking on the front going all the way around the blades, and I'm stepping down very fine until I reach the bottom where the hub is. So let's check it out. Blade Expert, I'm gonna go to my tool. The tool I'm using is a half inch Harvey One TE ball mill and I'm running it at two and a half thousandths per tooth at 400 SFM. The material is 316 stainless. So for the holder, I didn't model the holder because I knew it was at the front of the part and I didn't really have to worry about any clearances. I made sure to set the proper cutting length when I made the tool for the end mill. So I looked up that end mill, took the depth for the flutes, and I made sure to put that into Mastercam so it knew if it was going too deep. But these blades are kind of shallow, so it's not really something that I have to worry about. The next tab is the Setup tab. This is going to set up the work plane for the mill turn. And all I had to do here was select that I'm working with the upper left axis, and then I made sure to check the Align with Machine box and the Maintain Spindle Origin box. I didn't have to create any special tool planes like you do with some of the 3D tool paths and some of the five axis tool paths. So just set it to align with machine and maintain spindle origin. For the stock, I didn't really bother with a stock model for this operation because it was a finished pass. So I just left it at auto detect for the stock. And now we have the cut pattern window. This is actually where I specify what kind of operation I wanna do in Blade Expert. You have choices between roughing, blade finishing, hub finishing, or fillet finishing. So we have blade finishing selected. The default strategy was offset from hub, so I just left that alone. The contour selection, I left that at full. And the sorting method, also by default, it was set to one way start from leading edge, so I left that alone and told it cut direction is climb. Finally, we have our step down selections here under depth step. You have a choice between a number of step downs and it can space them evenly, or you can select the maximum distance for the step downs. So I have it going down every 10 thousandths because this is a finish pass. So for part definition, I'm gonna select our blades, splitter, and fillets and we're gonna start by selecting that arrow. I selected the walls of the blade, I selected the chamfer, and I selected the radius going all the way around this one blade. I don't need to select every single blade because I'm gonna take care of that in a little bit. One blade for that selection. For the hub, I clicked on the floor for this front of the part. So you can see it's just one solid feature going all the way around the part. Then I hit this check surfaces button here and I selected two more surfaces. Here's the blade we selected earlier. So what I did was I selected the two walls on the blades next to it. So this wall on one side and then this wall on the other side. And that way it can check the surface of the tool and make sure it's not going to contact that when it's going around the part. So there's 10 blades going all the way around the part. So I told it we've got 10 segments. So this way you're just making one selection on the part and it's copying that and going around there 10 times. I didn't really have to mess with any of the segment options here but you have choices whether if you wanna do all 10 segments or just a certain amount of them. And you can also choose which segment you start at for your first cut. I just left these alone. We're machining all of the segments and I told it to go clockwise. 
So for this quality section, I had to make a couple changes over here because we're doing a finish pass on the part. The first thing was that I changed my machining tolerance and I tightened it up so that it's a four tenths tolerance. That's whenever it does a curve on the part, it's gonna put more points on those curves so that the machining's a bit smoother. Then I checked this maximum distance box here and I set this to 20 thousandths, which I believe was the default for that. What that's doing is that every 20 thousandths on my toolpath, it's adding an endpoint to the toolpath. And that's gonna make the part look a lot nicer when it's going all the way around the part and towards the bottom of the toolpath. So here we have our tool axis control. The first options are for the tilt on our tool. And I didn't want this tool to be moving a lot while it was machining these blades, just so I didn't have to worry about it hitting the back of my part. And because this toolpath probably didn't need a whole lot of tilt. So I set that to five degrees for my tilt angle, set the side tilt angle to five degrees. And for the minimum lead angle, I set that to zero and the max lead angle I set to 10 degrees. For the machine angle limits, I also wanted to keep these pretty tight. So I set the minimum machine angle limit to 85 degrees and the maximum machine angle limit to 95 degrees. I had a maximum angle step of 0.5 and a maximum angle step for rapid moves set to five degrees. Now the last thing I set was in our linking tab and we have the link between our cuts and the link between our slices. Now by default, these are set to automatic but what that's gonna do is after one pass around the blade, it's gonna retract, it's gonna wrap it to the next starting point, and it's gonna start the next pass. So there's gonna be a lot of rapid moves when you do that. What I did was I set both of these to direct blend. What direct blend is gonna do is it's gonna keep that tool path basically down, and it's not gonna rapid every time it completes a pass. So the tool's gonna stay down, finish one path, go down to the next step down and finish the next path and it's not gonna wrap it up. The only time it's really gonna wrap it is when it finishes a full blade and it moves on to the next one. Now we also have our clearance selection here. I set that to sphere and I just told it to auto detect the dimension and the position for the clearances. That seemed to do the trick on this part. You may have to mess with it depending on your setup. Then you have our distance selection here for your entry feed distance and your exit feed distance. I set that to 400 thousandths to give it a little bit of length when it feeds in. Finally, there's an option at the bottom to replace your rapids with feed moves. I checked that and I set that to about 400 feed. What that's gonna do is it's gonna smooth out the movement every time my part rapids to the next blade. And that's pretty much it for the blade expert pass. I'm gonna generate the pass right now. You can see we have our finish pass going all the way around the part. Nice back off before starting the next blade. And then if I back plot this right now, you can see we have a little bit of a tilt going on with our tool. That's that five degree tilt that I told it as it goes down every 10 thousandths. And then it moves on to the next blade. So that's how I made my finish pass in Mastercam using Blade Expert. Once you know how it works, it's a very easy toolpath to use and it makes making all of these blades very easy. And especially in a mill turn environment, I don't have to mess with any axes or creating tool planes or trying to transform my toolpath and rotating it around. So just select one blade, tell it how many blades you want to make, and then set your parameters. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.